Well, the temperature is rapidly rising here in Washington. It's set to be quite a moment in a few hours. The House of Representatives will vote on a motion from the Democrats condemning the US president, in their words, for using racist language. Now, they are setting a challenge for Republicans. Put your neck on the line. Do you condemn this or not? Because so far, very few Republicans have spoken out. Fewer still have been willing to call these tweets racist. So what does Donald Trump get out of all of this? Well, potentially exactly what he wants. He has the Democratic Party unifying behind these four Congresswomen he considers politically extreme. He thinks that uh, rallies up his base. He thinks that allows him to dismiss the entire Democratic Party as crazy socialists and allow him yet again, as he did today, to go on the attack. He does not know how to defend his policies. So what he does is attack us personally. The four non-white recipients of Donald Trump's relentless onslaught had no hesitation what to call it. Xenophobic, bigoted remarks from the occupant of our White House. This is the agenda of white nationalists. These Democratic Congresswomen calling out the president's go back to your country's comments after he stepped up his attack. These are people that, in my opinion, hate our country. If you're not happy here, you can leave. He claimed on Twitter today, not for the first time, that he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. So does America have a racist president? He announced his candidacy, remember, with these remarks on Mexicans. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. He repeatedly questioned the birthplace of the nation's first black president. It's one of the greatest scams in the history of politics and in the history period. You are not allowed to be a president if you're not born in this country. He may not have been born in this country. And after white nationalists and counter-protesters fought in Charlottesville, a young woman killed by a neo-Nazi, Donald Trump, by then president, condemned and praised both sides. And you had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Racism, Republican leadership in the House of Representatives brushed it off. Were the president's tweets that said go back racist? No. The party more resolutely behind Donald Trump now more than ever. Very few among them have spoken out. It's a question the media has had to answer too. CNN, unequivocal. There's no other way, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. If it walks like a racist and it talks like a racist, then it is a racist. The president's favorite breakfast show, Amused. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. This tweet that you're just seeing now is clearly going to get, I think, a lot of discussion. Someone's feeling very comedic today. They can leave, they can stay. But they should love our country. And Donald they Trump, work. though, is unrepentant, as America is again engulfed in a row of his design, and that probably suits him just fine. It's my opinion they hate our country, and that's not good. It's not acceptable. Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You, Kieran Jenkins with that report from Washington. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to the author and columnist Jasmine Alibi-Brown and Anthony Scaramucci, who was briefly Donald Trump's director of communications, still counts himself as a supporter and friend. And I began by asking them, if you say something that's considered racist, does it make you a racist? To me, sure. there is so much evidence that this president absolutely has a white supremacist impulses and, and, and acts on them, the ban on Muslims traveling to the United States, these what are called by others concentration camps. Those children that are separated from their parents are not blue-eyed blondes. Um, the way he still insists that those um, five men, you know, in the 1988 Central Park rape trial, they were acquitted and he still says, they're guilty because there were five black men. There's so much here. And it's not, it's easy to criticize the language. They may be a part of him, which is good, which you know. But from where I sit, I see the United States of America has, has actually elected 
a man who is shamelessly racist. Okay, well, listen, I mean, you know, that's your, your opinion, and I respect your opinion. And, you know, you guys live in a free society. We live in a free society here in the United States. So you're entitled to your opinion. But I know him personally. I had the opportunity, remember, I was only in the White House for 11 days, but I worked with then candidate Trump for a year. I was on his uh, executive transition team for 12 weeks. And, uh, and I've also seen him involved in critical core policy decisions. You know, we could debate the Muslim ban. I personally do not like the Muslim ban. Uh, there are secular, secular Muslims in places like Iran, as an example, that can't come to the United States. I think that's unfortunate. And I think that's an unforced error by President Trump. But I don't think it's racist as much as it's a national security conscious decision uh, because of terrorists. Uh, the central George Conway, right? George Conway married to uh, a trusted counselor to the uh, president has categorically said in the last 24 hours, I am now convinced the president is racist. That's Kellyanne mm -hmm. Conway's yeah. point. Well, listen, I, like I said, he hasn't, I, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so he's ahead of me. If the president wants to continue down this course and say these sorts of things going into the 2020 election, uh, the country's moved past that sort of language. The country's moved past that sort of rhetoric. And so I think, you know, what ends up happening is when people do that and they are, I guess, maybe trying to show a sign of their strength or alpha maleism or something like that, the rest of the people in the social organism say, hey, you know what? That's not going to work for us. So if he continues on that path, like I said, you invite me back, I'll change my opinion. But based on my close observation of him and working personally with him and seeing the things that he did on prison reform, you know, he's he is backing off because he recognizes like, you know, people like me that actually are not politicians, don't care, are going to call it for exactly what it is. Uh, he's going to have to back off of it because he'll lose donors. He'll lose popular support. Let's see in six months if he continues down this path. I'll join uh, George Conway and denounce him. But for today, those statements are reminiscent of what my grandparents had to hear, what African-Americans had to hear in the South. It's interesting that you think politically Donald Trump is making a mistake here because a lot of people assume that he's doing this to appeal to the racism in his base and that it works for him. You, you, you think that would be a miscalculation? Uh, well, no, he's got better political instincts than me. He went from, if that's the calculation, you know, he may or may not be right. He's got very good political instincts. He won the American presidency after 17 short months of being a politician. So, and he slayed uh, 18 establishment players, including the Clinton empire. Let me just bring in Yasmin Alibi Brown again, because this is bigger than just America. It applies here as well. We're entering our own, you know, period of a controversial leader who says controversial things, uh, probably, with, with Boris Johnson. I mean, do you think all of this language from both these men has changed the parameters of what's acceptable, uh, you know, and what we think of as racism? Actually, it's a bit rich for Theresa May or Boris Johnson to stand up and, and say this is unacceptable because they have been guilty of almost worse here, playing to populism, playing race with race. Or go home vans on Yeah, Theresa May. and also, do you remember uh, Theresa May saying at uh, the 217 conference, party conference, the, uh, the people of everywhere are people of nowhere? That's what Hitler said. Right? And the fact that I am now getting, and people like me are getting, every day, every week, go home where you came from. People spitting on me uh, on buses, never happened before. These leaders, these leaders of the so-called free world encourage the population, okay, to turn against the best of what the country is. And I think that's a terrible shame that we have now headed in the same direction. I don't think we're better than America on this. I think, in fact, we're more sinister here. Anthony Scaramucci. I'm not loyal to the president as an individual. I'm loyal to the nation, the office of the presidency. I respect and like the president. But if he's going to take the country in this direction, uh, then responsible citizens like myself need to speak up. And so hopefully my speaking up and others that have the strength and courage to speak up. I mean, he could denounce me on Twitter. A lot of people are afraid of that. I could care less. 
You could say mean and nasty things about me. Maybe you can come up with a nickname. Actually could care less. It doesn't really matter to me, but it, I'm just explaining to you that if that's the direction, if that's the coarseness, and that is the dissension, and we are going to start separating ourselves like that again uh, after the original stain of slavery, the Civil Rights Act that was passed 100 years after the Civil War, and the election of an African-American president. Now, even though President Obama and I went to law school together, and I like him personally, I wasn't in love with his policies. The great irony here is if you could get Trump's policies with Obama's personality, people would frankly be very happy. Anthony Scaramucci and Yasmin Alibri-Brown surprisingly close to agreement.